So we're going to leave the hall for just a moment. Uh, well, not the hall itself. We're going to leave this story as they work on settling uh, this electronic vote problem issue here and uh, give you some reaction as uh, we start speaking to delegates here about uh, the party's decision to end its opposition to same-sex marriage in its policy. Uh, let's go to my colleague Martin Stern. Both of you spoke to the motion uh, on same-sex marriage. You were up at the microphone. Uh, the motion has passed, so now the con party's constitution is going to, well, the party's policy is going to change. Uh, what do you make of that, your reactions? You spoke against. I'm obviously disappointed, but I have to accept the voting. Uh, there are going to be long-term consequences, which are difficult to evaluate. Children and, well, the Canadian law uh, does not protect the ability of children to have a mother and a father. And that's common sense. I think everybody knows having a family, the importance of having a mother and a father. Um, it's a sad state of affairs for our society and for our children. So you feel this is a loss, this is a, as a loss for Canadian society? Absolutely. Um, your reaction, you spoke for this change in policy. Your reaction today? I'm very happy that it passed. It brings uh, Conservative Party policy in line with what the law, Canadian law is. The Supreme Court has ruled on this issue. Parliament has voted on it three times since 2009. Uh, it's settled law in Canada. No government ever is going to touch the marriage policy in Canada, and it's time the Conservative Party uh, re re recognize reality. You spoke when you spoke at the microphone. You said that you have been for 11 years living uh, in a party that you didn't feel welcome in. Well, I agree with 90 percent of what the party uh, party supports, and uh, on this, yes, it definitely felt me made me feel excluded. Uh, I was tired of defending the party to my gay friends, uh, you know, and having to say, well, you know, yes, there is this policy, uh, but I do still support the party. People were incredulous. I, I'm tired of defending it, and I. Uh, I think there's some misconceptions about what the motion suggests. We're not asking the party to take a pro-same-sex marriage stance. We're asking the party to be neutral on the subject of marriage so that both social conservatives and uh, gay LGBT conservatives can feel welcome in the party. That's all we're asking. What's, um, in terms of your involvement with the party, the party now has changed its policy in a major way. Does this affect the way you feel about the party, the Conservative Party? I'm going to have to think about it. Uh, I do agree with a lot of other things in the Conservative Party, and those things don't change. I believe in fiscal responsibility, small government, uh, and there are a lot of other resolutions with which I agree. So obviously this has to be taken in context. One of the things that have been raised uh, in the breakaway session, for example, a breakout session, was that this could cost the party in terms of social conservatives. I mean, a, a certain part of the, the clientele, if you will, the, uh, the base of the party. What do you think about it? I think there's going to be some effect in that area. It's difficult to gauge. I think people are going to need to think about the issue also and decide how committed they are to the party. What do you think uh, in terms of the future of the party, in terms of, you mentioned you think this will make the party more attractive. I do. I think there are a lot of uh, centrist voters who would otherwise be our allies on fiscal issues, foreign policy issues, things like that. But uh, they can't support the party because of issues, social conservative issues like this. Uh, and so I think this broadens the appeal of the party to, to centrists who are gravitating to the Liberal Party because they can't support us on these issues, but are still our natural allies. So I think any uh, losses due to disgruntled social conservatives are going to be uh, made up for by gains from centrists. So I, I don't see it a problem for the problem. Okay, well, both of you, I want to thank you from both sides of the issue. I know a very heartfelt issue on, on both of your parts. I want to thank you for taking the time and for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so we uh, begin to hear reaction from the delegates here. Uh, there is a split in the party, clearly. Uh, how deep? Uh, I think the vote uh, represented a significant, almost 70 percent of the people in the room uh, supported uh, this proposal, uh, supported this proposal to end the party's stated opposition to same-sex marriage. And so uh, uh, the debate continues in the hall over whether uh, that's a good idea, but clearly the majority of delegates think it is. And let's go back to my colleague, Martin Stern. Um, can I ask you your name and where you come from? Jack Fonseca from uh, the Riding of Kitchener Centre. Now, you've been associated with the issue of uh, same-sex marriage for quite a while, have you? Well, I'm a social conservative, so I believe in the traditional definition of marriage. Okay. And your name is and where are you from? My name is Natalie Pond and I'm from the Riding of Edmonton West. Okay. Now, um, can I ask you, uh, you spoke against this and um, you spoke against this motion and uh, the motion obviously was defeated, so I'm just wondering where you go from here? 
Um, well, I, I think um, the party may have a very serious problem in terms of uh, uh, having marginalized and told its, uh, its uh, huge base of social conservative supporters that uh, their values are not welcome. And uh, that could uh, ensure permanent, uh, permanent electoral losses for the conservatives here. Um, and, and uh, a liberal majority government for, for, for a generation to come. So this is a very serious issue. Um, I think uh, social conservatives should stay engaged, and, uh, and we'll have to see if, the, if they do, or if many will decide to stay home on Election Day and, uh, and uh, just not get involved. But uh, there were also social conservative victories here. Uh, Pro-life resolutions were also passed, so uh, it wasn't all bad. Okay, Natalie, you have uh, been involved in, from the very beginning in trying to get this change uh, in the party. A lot of different riding associations were involved. Uh, your argument for this uh, and your argument, which was victorious? Well, I'm pro-equality, and I think that in Canada we need to respect the law, and our party needs to respect that all Canadians can get married if it's between two consenting adults. And so in deleting the, de the traditional definition of marriage from our policy book, we're stating that we as the Conservative Party are welcoming to all Canadians in this party. And I think ultimately we're going to bring in a lot of voters because of this. I disagree uh, with yeah, that. Well let, me just, well, let me just put that to you. How do you respond to the fact that there have been, and you saw also in the breakout session, there has been a debate about maybe losing a part of the base of the party, and that is the social conservative base of the party. How do you respond to that? I think the most important thing about this resolution was that it's not redefined defining marriage. We're t merely just taking out a definition that was between one man, one woman, which isn't reflective of current laws as it is right now. We're not saying that you cannot be a part of this party if you don't believe in gay marriage. We're saying that everyone, regardless of your belief, has a place in this party because we are not defining what marriage is in our policy declaration. Okay, now uh, with regards to social conservatives, I, was, I just spoke with Preston Manning, for example, and we've spoken with several outspoken social conservatives, including some MPs. Well, Preston Manning's not one. He's right. not. A, he's a social liberal. Okay. He's, yeah. But in terms of... Okay. conservative, but he's a a social liberal. In terms of some of the other people, though, MPs who have described themselves as social conservatives, several of them have told us this is a battle that we don't need to fight anymore. It's really more a matter of just getting the whole state and getting the party out of the bedrooms and not making this an issue for the party. What do you make of that? Well, I, think, I think that's a very short-sighted uh, view, and they're not thinking straight at all. Um, if they want to ensure, uh, they, if they want to give uh, Justin Trudeau a lock on power for the next uh, two decades at least, well, they've, they've uh, helped him to do that. The fact is that uh, uh, a huge part of the, of the conservative movement, the small-c conservative movement, is social conservatives. And traditional family values is a part of conservatism, true conservatism. And, uh, tr and you know, the, these other uh, kind of philosophies on uh, alternatives to, uh, to traditional family values are, are not part of traditional conservatism. So there, there's a problem here. And they've taken away, too, they've taken away the growth of the party, the ability of the party to grow. How do you attract the new Canadians, the new immigrants who come from, country, from parts of the world that are largely social conservative, like China, the Middle East, Africa, Latin America, Eastern Europe? They're almost entirely socially conservative. This policy was one way to appeal to them to say, hey, look, only the Conservative Party aligns with your values. Vote your values. Okay. Natalie, I mean, you have the counterpart of that, and yeah. you're arguing what? That this is going to widen well, the base of the party? I, I'm Chinese, and I'm in favor of I this. I think you're a huge minority. You're okay. a minority. Okay. Anyway, let her speak. So um, you're, you're... You know, I, I really think that if we're going to look at what conservative values are, we need to think about personal liberties and small government. And does the government have a role in our lives to say who you can and cannot marry? And should the government be dictating those kinds of roles? Or is the government going to say, you know what? We don't care what's going on in your personal lives as long as it's respective of the current laws of the country right now. So, no, I would disagree. I think we are following conservative values right now in small government and personal freedoms. Okay, last question. Are you then, are you then condoning or asking people to abandon the Conservative Party and then just join, not at all. join not say, at all. the Christian Heritage Party? Or? No, not at all. I, I think, uh, you know, there are still, um, uh, there were some social conservative wins. There were some pro-life wins. Uh, the uh, conscience uh, rights for doctors and healthcare workers to not have to refer for abortions, euthanasia-assisted suicide passed. So there, there is reason, and I think social conservatives should continue to influence the party. They're still a huge part of it, and uh, they deserve an equal seat at the table. Okay. On that note, we're going to wrap up. I know this is a debate that will probably not over, but I want to thank both of you for uh, sharing your views. Thanks for speaking with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. You too. All right, Martin Stringer uh, speaking with delegates uh, here at the Conservative Party Convention in Vancouver. Um, and uh, on the same-sex marriage uh, vote taken by the party today to remove its objection in its policies, effectively removes the objection by uh, removing the definition of marriage as between one man and one woman. So that is now stripped from uh, party policy. Uh, roughly, uh, just under, uh, by my quick count, just under 70 percent 
of delegates here at the convention voting in favor of that change.